Hey, what's going on, ladies and gents? It's your friend, Neighborhood Content Creator. I wanted to make a video about Yaimiko's potential team that you guys might want to consider. I'm going to show you guys the builds, the weapons, whatever it may be for you guys to have an idea of how this might go if you have Yaimiko. But before we continue on this video, guys, please consider liking this video as well as subscribing to the channel. It will help me out a lot and I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for the support on my channel. Now, for Yaimiko's team in general, I do want to preface that you are probably going to need some sort of battery to help Yaimiko. In this team currently, I have Lisa to portray the Yaimiko quote-unquote. And I'm going to show you guys the rest of the team here, which I have official, I have Beidou, and I have Shinkyo. Obviously, you can switch out maybe Beidou for a character like Bennett in order for you guys to get the most amount of damage to be done. Now, for your Yaimiko, you're going to have to run a weapon with either the crit rate or crit damage if you want the best sort of crit rate crit damage ratio. For Yaimiko in specific, you're going to have a new weapon that's going to be released. Obviously, this new weapon is going to be a catalyst, but this catalyst, we're not quite sure yet. I don't think they talked about this in the live stream what the catalyst is going to have for their stat so the secondary stat but i am sure if it is create or crit damage it's going to be the best in slot anyway it is made for her it is totally made for her so that weapon is probably going to be the best on her now if you do not have that weapon or you probably might not have the weapon unless you summon on it this weapon is going to be incredible on your yeah, the wits as a weird passive in the sense that it gives three different types of buffs for example only one of these buffs can occur at a time you can get either an attack increase you can get an elemental damage increase or we can get an elemental master increase. This weapon is insane with refinement. As you guys can see, you can increase your attack 90%, 72% by elemental damage, or the 360 increase in elemental mastery, which is insane. And if you guys know, elemental mastery is big on Yaimiko. So this also had crit damage, and the base attack isn't that bad either. But it's not the best, but it's not that bad. Now, for the artifact set, the artifact set, we can talk about a few sets here, but currently what I have is the Emblem of Serta Fate, and this is probably going to be the set I'm going to be running on Yaimiko for now, until I get a decent Gladiator or Shimanawa with Thundering Fury. Now, there, for this build, this is going to be a generally just burst build or elemental skill and then elemental burst build, so you get energy recharge, which you probably need on your Yaimiko, and this is going to be pretty decent for you guys. And that's what I'm going to be using for my Yaimiko. All right, here we go. The Thundering Fury set gives a two-piece set bonus of Electro Damage bonus increase of 15%. The four-piece, stay away from it. It's terrible. Do not, just, just don't. All right, it's not that great. Could work on Yaimiko. It actually could work. So it's going to increase the... Electro charge damage if you want to have an individual like Inko or Tartaglia or even Kokomi on your team This will be pretty big. It's going to also like decrease your cooldowns by a little bit You could run a four piece of the Wanderer's Troop Why you can run this is because obviously the elemental mastery is going to increase your damage done by your elemental skill And the catalyst users also get an increase in charge attack damage I don't think this is really that great personally And I don't think you should build your Yaimika upon this If you want a really strong charge attack, I guess you could use this I don't suggest it because elemental burst and elemental skill is where her kid is at is going to be an incredible burst support character where you you know you go to your burst you go to elemental skill and then leave the field so i would suggest having a thundering fury set as well as the gladiators or shimanawa on her and if you don't have that you could potentially also run the thunderer soothers or the thunder soother set you're going to increase your elemental damage by 35 percent or your electro damage rather and in Yaimika's case, you're a Catalyst user, so you're going to be applying, you know, Electro almost all the time. And I would suggest you guys also to have an Electro Damage Cup always. You definitely have to have. All her damage is Electro Damage. You're not going to benefit too much from Attack Percentage in the Cup form, but obviously in the others, you should probably have Attack Percentage. Now, I don't need to talk about Constellations or Talents because, you know, mostly we can't really talk about Constellations. We don't know them yet. 
put the talents, I would suggest at least six on all of them because she's going to be really, really strong in that sense. But if you want a main DPS Yai Miko, you're going to have to go with you know, a lot on your normal and charge attack damage, your normal attacks. You're going to have to get them up a little bit more than usual on each character. Now for your actual teammates that are going to be on this, you're going to need a Fischl. Now, my Fischl is pretty decent, especially since, you know, she has Stringless. But the reason why you would want to have Fischl is you get a lot of elemental particles from Oz. After each hit, Oz hits, you're going to get an elemental particle, an electrotype. So this is going to help charge your Yai Mika's elemental burst so you can use it more often. This is why Fischl is going to be incredibly good. Obviously for Fischl, you can run a few sets on her to make her a better support. Currently, she'll top 4 damage. However, I do suggest you guys can use a set like the Tenacity of the Millilith on her, or you guys can use another set such as the such as the 4 piece for the Noblesse Oblige, or you guys could use or you guys can run whatever, you know, damage set that you have. You know, it is official. I would suggest using a four-piece tenacity of Milith or a four-piece of the Noblesse Oblige. And for official, you're probably going to need a bit in your elemental skill. This is this the best thing about her, her elemental skill. So you're going to need to talent that up the most. Now, for your third character, your third character is going to be flexible. Currently, I have Beidou because I'm... I really enjoy playing Beidou right now. She's an incredible sub DPS and I highly suggest you guys build her if you do not have Beidou yet built. Beidou is really easy to build, have a crit rate crit damage weapon, easy P 4 piece set of the Emblem of Severed Fate. This is going to increase her, your element burst damage by a lot. Constellations, I have her C stakes which is insane. But you're going to stop at C2 if you really need constellations for Beidou. Talents, all into burst, honestly, all into burst. You're going to have to put the rest into the elemental skill. Unless your main DPS is Beidou, which it is not on a Yai Miko team. Do not put anything in the normal attack. It could be the Raiden Shogun. If you have this character on your team with Yai Miko, it's going to change things tremendously. It's going to improve it so much more. It's going to help with the energy recharge. It's going to help with the sub DPS. It's going to help with everything. This is going to be an amazing character for you if you have her with Yai Miko. And I definitely suggest you guys have the Raiden Shogun on that team instead of your third character. For example, when I told you guys, now I know a lot of you guys already have the Raiden Shogun. And if you do, I would suggest using that character, but I showed you guys Beidou instead, just because of those guys that do not have the Raiden Shogun yet. The Raiden Shogun needs an energy recharge weapon. You don't need to use the Skyward Spine. I highly suggest using the Cat, probably one of the great greatest weapons on her. I highly suggest using it. Now for her artifacts, four piece of emblem severed fate. Highly suggest it. That's all you need. For constellations, she's going to be good at C0. You don't need constellations on her. And her elemental skills and elemental burst is probably the only thing that you're going to need on her for, you know, right now. So it would look something a little similar to this, where you have a bunch of energy recharge on your Raiden Shogun. Ping Cho is probably one of the greatest sub DPS characters in the game or just characters in the game he's such a great support he does so much damage off the field and on the field and i'll tell you guys why his weapon choice has to be the sacrificial sword i know a lot of you guys might not have this because technically it is a pay to play weapon however he has other weapons that you could use on him that isn't quote unquote pay to play but this is definitely the best weapon for sure if you guys don't have this weapon or you don't have leveled up so instead of using your elemental skill twice with the sacrificial sword you're going to use it once only and you're going to regenerate six more energy particles instead for the artifacts the artifacts is going to be a little bit flexible on Xingqiu. you're going to have either a four piece of the noblesse oblige on Xingqiu or a two piece two piece in which you can have the hydra set you can have the noblesse as you guys can see i have that here or you can have the emblem severed fate four piece on him which is going to increase his burst damage by a lot personally i don't think it's that important to have Xingqiu on anything but if you do not have tenacity of Millilith or noblesse oblige on your official i would suggest having it on your xing Chou instead for constellations every single one of his constellations is a mix he has so many good constellations from increasing the number of rain source to hydro resistance decrease to even increasing your elemental skill damage by 50 percent which is additive by the way and to the in energy regeneration as well now his talent i suggest you guys get both his elemental skill and elemental burst damage as much as possible even crown them if you want these are probably the best two skills in the game now 
this skill does so much damage especially if you have a sacrificial sword as you're going to hit twice with it and it does this much yes it does almost as much as an element burst it's insane and his element burst obviously you keep hitting you keep doing 103 percent on each individual sword all right now that we talked about all of these characters once yaimiko's in the game i'll be able to show you guys the proper use of this team but yeah ladies and gents that's going to be pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you guys did enjoy and you got something out of it if you did consider liking this video subscribe to the channel as well that'd be greatly appreciated i'll see you guys in the next video very very soon bye